In today's video, should you interlock the car park ventilation systems with the time schedule? I'm currently reviewing a BMS design and I have the PDF on the left hand side of the screen so you can't see it. In the section where it describes the time schedules, there's a table there and it talks about the commercial office floors, individual time schedules for each floor. It talks about the retail tenancies in the ground floor, what times are their time schedules. And then there's a time schedule called car park and loading dock. Initially set to Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. This is quite a common thing that I find when I review BMS designs where we are interlocking the car park ventilation system with an occupancy time schedule. In today's video, we're going to have a quick look at the Australian standard and see what it says about interlocking with a time schedule. AS 1668 Part 2. Section 4. Ventilation of enclosures used by vehicles with combustion engines. 4.11 Ventilation Control, page 53. Now, in section 4.11 Ventilation Control, there are three pages full of information on the Australian standards and the requirements around controlling the ventilation. We have spoken about a few of these things in previous videos and some of you might recognize this little drawing from the online training courses and I think we did a YouTube video early last year on this. But there is a lot of stuff in here that we've never spoken about that we should all be across. Now when you read this, nowhere in here does it talk about a time schedule. It doesn't say anywhere in here that the car park ventilation system shall be you know, interlocked with the building's occupancy time schedule. In fact, in section 4.12.2 system requirements, it says, a CO monitoring system that is installed to regulate mechanical ventilation shall, and there's a whole bunch of points in there, point B says operate 24 hours per day. So my interpretation of the standard is that it doesn't say in here that you can have a time schedule. So you've got two actions out of this video. One, send an email to your engineering manager and ask them to remove any reference to a time schedule with your base BMS designs for the car park ventilation system. The second thing is, if your company does not have a copy of the standard, ask your manager to get a copy of it. I only started reading these standards when I started doing consulting work. So for 15 years, I worked for BMS companies in South Africa, London, and Australia. I never ever read any standards in those three countries until now. And it's, you know, if you look at this document, there's a lot of stuff in here. Almost all of it is completely irrelevant to us, but there is a lot of information in there. Well, there's a lot, but there's, a, there's enough stuff in there to warrant us understanding what the code says. Because all mechanical specifications in Australia, and I'm assuming in the whole world, mechanical consultants are always gonna reference the standards of their country to cover themselves. It never happens that you would read a mechanical specification and they would describe completely in there everything that you have to do to meet the code around CO2 control and CO control as an example. There are a lot of things in here that we're not doing and we are therefore non-compliant to the code. Please see in the description below of this video any other, I'll link any other videos that discuss the same topic and Sometimes I'll provide updates to the online training courses. Please like and subscribe so that people that are in the internet searching for BMS stuff can find these videos and also get some value from them. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.